I will be queuing everyone, okay? Uh, Ronnie will go first. Hi, good evening, everyone, and thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Veronica Litton, and we are, and I am going to be hosting tonight's AMA with Mark Abaya for the Collectiverse. So, um, hang on tight. Our stream is going to start in just a couple of minutes. Uh, first of all, I hope uh, many of the people who joined us earlier for our AMA with the toy is also here with us as well. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We're going to be talking about artistry. We're going to be talking about collecting. And we are going to have a lot of fun talking about what all the different elements that brought this project together. Um, so since this is an AMA, everyone who's listening right now, please feel free to drop all your comments, suggestions, and questions for the session tonight right here in the comment box. And don't forget to share with your friends. Okay, so how's everyone doing tonight so far? Mark Abaya is going to be joining us in just a couple of minutes. I hope everyone is excited. Uh, this is going to be a chance for fans, for collectors, for audiophiles, and for requistas alike to get to learn more about the projects that Mark has uh, with the Collectiverse, with these amazing, safe, and celebrity-approved NFTs. Uh, in addition to that, Mark is going to be joined uh, by some of our friends from the Anatoys Collectiverse. So it's going to be a really, really engaging discussion for us to learn all about how this amazing project came to be. So while everyone's coming in, as we're uh, waiting, I'd like to greet everyone a really good evening. I hope everyone's having an amazing Friday, Swelda Friday, actually. And I want to welcome you all to our second Ask Me Anything AMA session from the Collectiverse with Mark Abaya. So make sure you're all settled down, comfortable, invite some of your friends, and we are going to have fun. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Mark Abaya is going to be joining us in just a few moments. So let's hang on tight. So here at the Collectiverse, you know, we really value your opinion. So whether you're whitelisted or not, make sure to pick up tidbits of actionable advice and grab the chance to voice your ideas and share your opinions, really, as we bring this project together. We are just minutes away from officially starting, um, and I really encourage everyone to have fun, interact. You know, it's 9, 9.30 on a Friday night. We've all had a long week. This is our chance to relax and totally geek out as well. Um, all questions will be accommodated. Um, and we'll also take the, the moment to field um, as many questions as we can during the AMA. And feel free to engage. But always remember, have fun, be kind, and be respectful towards each other. So how's everyone doing tonight over at the comment section? See, we've got a couple of friends here. How's everyone doing tonight? Doing a bit of a shout out to Christian, Zenifer, Aya, and Archo. Thank you guys for joining us. Please invite all your friends. We are going to have a lot of fun tonight. Once again, we are going to be talking about art. We're going to be talking about music. We are going to be talking about collectibles. And we are going to be talking about all the elements that really put this amazing project together. Um, not sure if some of you guys have seen the NFTs, but you know, this was really a labor of love from everyone involved. And I'm really personally excited. I love the NFTs. Um, I've taken a look at them myself and I'm just so excited to hear everyone's thoughts, to get the story and to really hear about how everyone came together for such an exciting and groundbreaking project at that. So we're going to be starting in just a couple of minutes. So while we're waiting and while we're having fun, please feel free to invite all your friends over, share, like, subscribe, Hit that share button and we are going to begin in just a couple of minutes.
saying hello to some of our friends in the stream right now. Angel, Aina, Pau, Carlo, Christian, thank you all for joining us. Okay, so without any further delay, let us introduce um, one of the biggest rock icons in the country. And personally, one of my favorite MTV VJs of all time. Uh, great actor, musician, all around artist. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your hands for Mr. Mark Abaya. Mark, how are you today? There, uh, turned on the mic. Basically, there, there we I'm go. sorry. I'm just super okay. excited. I've never done this. So um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you're the one interviewing. And, and I can't wait to start talking about this whole Collectiverse adventure. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for having me. Thank you. And I hope that everybody who's listening now, you know, you can say whatever you want and um, have fun. You know, we're going to be telling a lot of stories like Ronnie said. We're going to be geeking out a lot. And it's going to be fun. It's a Friday night, you know. To just hang out <laughs> definitely definitely so before we begin i can't just help but look at that amazing display <laughs> that you have right there behind you uh, maybe as we're as we're beginning maybe you can take us through some of those pieces that you have over there in that wonderful glass case yeah sure sure um so basically like okay so ronnie and me like we we geeked out before this thing and then finally, so I can show show him, show her like what I got. So Ronnie here on the top, I got, remember I said I got my Mazinger stuff. Yeah. I got my Cobra. I mean, why do you need the Joes when you can get the bad guys? Yeah, Ronnie. Exactly. And then Ronnie and me, Ronnie and me share this special love for your He-Man. <laughs> the Masters of the Universe figures. I couldn't find a a proper trap jaw because you know they cost an arm and a leg now so i just got a mythic legions version have you ever seen that one mm -hmm. no so this there, is the first time that, i'm actually looking at it so there that's the mythic legions version if you notice it's the same color palette as trap jaw yeah mm -hmm. so there we got jacko we got there some of the thundercats um when i go to the bottom so there, this is like, you know, the toys that made me. So from the 80s, you got Transformers, you got some of the new Joes, Star Wars, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Visionaries, which was a rare find that I'm so happy I found, you know. And then at the bottom is the NECA, like movie movie heroes that I always loved. So, you know, um, especially there, I'm sure you love the Crow too, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. um, there I got the, the Highlander. You know, if I if, if if I thought I was a superhero or, you know, I'd probably be Connor McCloud. And then at the bottom is just like a mix of everything from Breaking Bad to customized figures of my character from Provinciano. I don't know if I should be ashamed of that. Predators, you know, Star Wars, uh, Kazushi Sakuraba from MMA. I couldn't help myself. I needed to get the Harley Kim, the SH figure because she's just so hot. I got a Joker in the back. And then another custom figure of me there that someone made. So that's my toy collection. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, you should know that when I showed Ronnie my Masters of the Universe collections, she busts out Castle Grayskull. <laughs> would you like to see Castle Grayskull again? I, I think everybody would like to. I, I would just hate you more, but why not? <laughs> you can get oh, these in Toys R Us now. I know. A Snake Mountain, have they made a Snake Mountain? I know they made a Snake Mountain version, like a new one. But is yeah, it available? And it's, I've seen some people here who have it, but it's like $500. So I could only imagine how it is with shipping. So that new Snake Mountain, so for people who are unaware, in Masters of the Universe, Snake Mountain is the layer of Skeletor and, and the, the evil warriors. So that Snake Mountain, it's like five feet high. It's like four feet wide it is absolutely <sighs> insane it is a work Shoot. of art hell yeah hell yeah uh, we're gonna get it ronnie between you and me and i'll make it my mission to get it first so the next time i talk to you i'll be like holding like the five foot and be like what what <laughs> i know and i'll just but feel you so it's like okay i got 
my little gray skull. Okay, all right. Yeah, but down. you got gray skull, <laughs> man. Gray. I mean, the whole the whole new series, the but it's all around gray skull and the sorceress it's and, and Dila being the ba? the females being so yeah. badass and and I love it and there i mean and and i mean i'm 42 years old so i, I saw it when it was coming out and it's mm -hmm. just so funny how, how some people are hating on it because it's pro woman but you know i'm not offended by it i think it's i think it's awesome i think that teal i think it's awesome that teal is the daughter of man at arms and sorceress you know what i mean i love it that evelyn finally used her sensuality to seduce Skeletor and kick his motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? She took the power sword. She took the power exactly. sword for herself. And she, she basically became the master of the universe. Whoever saw that coming. Exactly. And she kissed him. She finally kissed Skeletor. And we saw it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I really do hope they make a season two. So, you know, I as agree. we're talking about collectibles here you know we could start to pivot over to digital collectibles because this is really um what drew you in over to the collectiverse so yeah. when it comes to digital collectibles what is it attracts you toward towards its possibilities there, it, it's the idea of it i mean we're so used to having the physicals you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um i can't help but think that i mean I have to go back again. Like, I make this analogy. Like with music, right? I mean, when, when I started making albums with Sandwich in, in, in the, towards the late 90s, I loved CDs. CDs were music. Having the physical CD, the, the, the official CD of Alice in Chains, of Razorback, of, of Pantera, of Slayer, of Smashing Pumpkins, of the Deftones. Having that CD... You know, it was a personal thing. The music was mine. That CD, that album was made for me. It was very, it was physical. And then all of a sudden Napster comes out and, and it, there's a paradigm shift. The musicians are against it because they lose money. But then the fans say that no, music should be free. And, and that, you know, um, musicians are just greedy and working for greedy record companies. And, 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 it, and after that chaos... That of ideology, whether music should be free. I mean, I do subscribe to that mentality. Yeah, music should be free. Why not? Music is art, yeah? But there, there, there's so many, there were so many arguments for and pros and cons. And then who would have thought that, you know, we'd be on Spotify? I mean, I'm on Spotify. I have all my CDs there, but I have no use for them. They're just memorabilia. So now I can... You know, I can go to Spotify and find all the songs I've ever been looking for remixed, remastered for a pittance. For, I mean, I pay for it, but it's all there. My point is, I would never have imagined that order out of the chaos. You know what I mean? So when, 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 I, was, when I started trying to understand what M NFTs were all about, blockchains, more NFTs, that there, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a collectible. It's a non-fungible token. But essentially, it is a collectible. Couldn't that be the future? I mean, I've heard of artists, so I did my research. And there, David Bowie, um, he passed away. But his, his, his group released one of his tracks, unreleased tracks, with, with new video on it, released as an NFT. And you could get it. You could buy it officially. And, you know, and it, it just made me think that, you know, it, it's more personal. It, it, we're back to the personal. It just gave me that sense of music is, again, personal. It's not just, again, the problem of Spotify, again, this is my humble opinion, is that as opposed to the way we were in the 80s, in the 90s, where you had to listen to the whole album, even before CDs, you had the cassette tapes, you memorized what you know? What song one was? The song sixteen. What was the first track on side B? You know what I mean. You listen to the album. It was personal, as opposed to Spotify. But one of the cons that I observed about it, I'm not saying it is. It's just an observation. Is that there? There are many casual listeners. Mm -hmm. Meaning, oh God, yeah, I love that song. That song of of, of the Deftones. And then you'd be like. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but the dinosaur that I am will be like, what about this song? And then they'll be like, 
I, I, I don't know that song. And I'm, I'm like, it's, it's, a, it's on the same album. And they're like, oh, no, I just listened to the single. It's not as special as it used to be. Mm-hmm. So there, when I try to understand what NFTs are and how special they are and that you have to be part of this blockchain, go out of your way to get it. But when you do get it, it's personal because it's approved by the artist himself, herself, or the band. So again, no, it, in a way, it becomes a CD, but in the digital realm, mm-hmm. which is futuristic, which is there. That, that, that's why it's a, it's, a, it's a utopic concept that I subscribe to. Again, we're all trying to understand it. And as far as I'm concerned, I believe in it as, as there, as, as the future. And as a bright new path, especially for, for me as, as an artist, as a musician, you know, I mean, like now we're surrounded by so much pressure. I, I'm just talking as a musician. Now, you know, you don't need to make an album. Just make a single because that's what sells. That's what people listen to. You know, um, they don't like albums. They don't have the time. And that's the casual listener, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. If you subscribe to that kind of mentality, it's fine. But I'm a music fan. And when I love a band or an artist, I want to, if I like one song, I'll listen to the whole album. I'll research the discography, listen to the track before and invest whatever that that is and in whether it's emotions my time my focus you know and with nfts there you it just has that promise that same promise like so that, that, the sorry the, the way that i see it is there it will be the death of the casual listener and it makes you know, mu- music pure again and important. And, and I hope I don't sound narcissistic as a musician. I know I do. But as a music fan too, I'm, I'm talking that way, man. I mean, we come from that generation. I'm sorry, again. Look, now I'm apologizing for everything that I say. We're so different from the 90s where you could just say anything you want. Now we have to watch everything we say. But my point is, nowadays... I don't know kung hanggang ngayon, ah. I mean, look, a band like Slayer is Slayer. And if you know what the band is, you have fear, respect, or disgust for the band. And now all of a sudden, I mean, from my generation, I'm 42. It's classic. You see, if you see a kid, and I, I'm sorry, you see a kid walking down this, or a, or a pretty girl walking down the street wearing a Slayer shirt, and you're like, "Whoa, this girl knows Slayer," and she doesn't even know the band. She just bought it because of the print. In our time, you know, with our generation, that that would be a mortal sin, because, dude, you gotta love the band. You gotta be a fan to wear it. And in our time, remember it. When when Kalia was there, Razorback was playing. When Wolfgang was there, part of, I mean, part of going to the rock show was wearing your favorite rock shirt, you know, and repping it. So in, in, in that time, I remember the first time I went to Kalia, I rocked a Pearl Jam shirt that I ordered from the states. You know what I mean? It didn't it didn't matter how much it costed. It didn't mat- matter how long it took, because I loved Pearl Jam so fucking much. At that time, in my, I mean, I was a teenager. Pearl Jam saved my life. Nirvana saved my life. Metallica saved my life. They made me feel not crazy. They made me feel stronger, you know, with their words. They didn't make me violent. They just made me more secure. Because regardless of the world, I mean, growing up isn't easy, you know what I'm saying? But these bands, their music, listening to them, knowing that I could go home you know, after being afraid the whole day because the bully would, would be waiting every day to kick my ass at dismissal. The one thing that got me through was knowing that I could go home after the beating and listen to the most aggressive, angry music 
you know, and feel good about it because here, here are these wonderful artists, wonderful musicians making music that felt, felt like they were made for me, you know? And it's, it's special. So I'm not just talking as an artist. I'm talking as a music fan. And I mean, it's in my point of view. There are many point of views regarding what an NFT is, what it's for, you know, the value. But I see it as, as, as a collectible, as a fan. Like, like we talked about our toys. I keep my toys here because when I see them, they make me happy. They really do. And I go out of my way. I mean, people say, wow, you know, you're so privileged. You can afford those toys. Yeah, but, you know, I save money. I work hard. And the reason why I spend on them is they make me happy. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how I would like to talk about NFTs more than you know, can I make money in the, in the, you know, is it, is it in the markets? I, I don't know. I, in, in the, in my researching about it, I didn't care about that stuff. All I cared about was I'm a fan, man, you know, and, and Bitoy is there. Michael fucking V man is beside me. And if he has an NFT, hell yeah, I'm going to buy it. Cause I was around when he came out, I was a fucking kid, you know? And if I'm beside him, why not? And, and there, I'm sorry that I'm blabbering away. It's just that I love it that you started this with, with the toys. I mean, I, di I didn't know where we were going with it, but it is connected, you know, Ronnie? It, and it really is. It, you know, if I can share this, I really love the analogy you made about how a lot of people today don't have the connection that we did when it came to albums. Because, yeah. you know, back in the day, you listen to the album in full and you know that's really where you find like those like little special takes and those those little bits that really capture your heart if i can share this with you because you brought them up earlier Woo! Using <laughs> 10 as an example and i've had this copy of 10 since i was like 13 years old so you know if you go you know if you go through 10 and all you hear is just the singles which are even flow alive and jeremy you lose also you, you lose garden Black. you lose right you use why go you lose see we're talking about the album we know the album from top to bottom you lose black you <laughs> lose black the song are you kidding me exactly and, and there yeah the analogy you made, it uh, really, you know, it really made me think, especially again when you brought up Pearl Jam, because I was like, how amazing would it be if not only could I have a representation of the album or of the song, but let's say Pearl Jam tomorrow decided, hey, guess what? We're going to make an NFT of black. Oh, hell yeah. Let's I go. Would, I would lose my mind. Yeah, I would let's absolutely go. lose my mind if Pearl Jam made an NFT of black because people have that connection with that song um when you listen to the live concerts it's that one song everyone sings along to it's a powerful yeah. thing and now through you know having nfts people can now own their own representation of that song that's approved by the band and it's something that they have forever yeah but that's why, and, and there, we're in sync. But herein lies the rub. Mm -hmm. I think Bitoy said it best in his video when he said that, imagine having this, there, imagine having Black, the song, but then you have a digital representation of it. Isn't that exciting? Herein lies the rub because it is true. The idea is, but I don't think people get it yet. Mm -hmm how cool it would be to have a digital representation even i'm trying to understand it i'm but i'm i'm okay because as an artist because again nft so far so far they deal with digital art specifically so music that's me so i can make music um i can make music videos you know what i mean and and that's what i see so far i mean yeah you can have paintings correct that's another thing with it and very but when it's the way Bitoy said it 
that that was so clear that for me I think that's the future because I mean I mean in that and regardless of generation at eto na yon, regardless of generation whether you're old or new how long are we all on our fucking phones even though even though we try our best to balance our lives to tell ourselves it's time you know sometimes you got to put down the phone which is true and take in the sunset instead of standing there and taking the fucking picture which is true but that's humanity trying to balance tech with real life but what is undeniable is that the tech who would have thought that again i'm i'm sorry to jump huh that the internet would be so engulfing we must remember that in the early 90s and we were there the internet was just for emailing that was it emailing next thing and then web 2 happens and you have this social media explosion it's a wonderful wonderful chaos i'm i'm an agent of chaos what movie was that are you talking about um one of the batmans with yeah there you go there you go that's good enough there you go that's joker yeah. you know what i mean it, it was fun it was fun but there as just like from napster to spotify the way i see web3 is again it's utopic so it could go right and it would go horribly wrong because again okay it can go right because there could be order and i believe in that i believe in freedom but i also i'm sorry to be like philosophical and all that shit but druidic but i also believe that with freedom there must be order a form of order otherwise diba kupalan tayo sa mundo which sad to say is happening right now if you know what i mean with the explosions of pinks and reds and what are the other colors blues and and people dissing each other friendships broken um you know it, it bothers me and it upsets me because at the same time people are preaching you know that that political ideology shouldn't affect our friendships but they've been doing it and i'm saying it for everybody now what the fuck happened now, was it the effect of covid was it the effect of the lockdown or do people believe so much that they can't see that they're turning into what they hate most regardless of your political ideology i don't give a fuck my problem with it is there's so much chaos that people are hurting each other it feels like they're out to hurt each other verbally in the internet and it isn't fucking right you know what i'm saying and since we're talking and and to share i won't say say much But if you know my band, you know who's in my band. And I love him. He's my friend before anything. He's my brother. We've played for more than 10 years together. So regardless of political ideology, that's what matters to me. But my point is again, I'm sorry to, to have said that and I'm sorry if I offended anybody. What I'm against is this this ma- is it mass is sti- exactly, it's infighting, it's chaos. And it's not right. I, I do have a question there because, you know, uh, you know, given the climate that you mentioned, and now that everyone is super connected, especially you know, given how things are going to be moving forward with the adoption of more and more emerging technology, do you think uh, platforms that promote local art, especially when it comes to to music, do you think that'll give a chance for people to sort of remember what they liked about each other remember what they liked exactly. about exactly the and exactly come together right. in a new digital platform to exactly. share art exactly that's what i was hoping for but there if you guys are listening now i've been silent very very long because i hope you understand that it's very difficult to speak your mind especially when you don't feel the need to explain yourself that something should be private i have my own ideology but my ideology is ultimately don't fuck with me i won't fuck with you let's all live in harmony but 
That's what I noticed. That's why I refuse to perform now. Because, again, I'm an agent of rock and roll. That's me. Rock. I love it. It, it made me who I am. It, it's what I wanted to be. And I find myself there. I still do it. And if you see my videos, that's what I've been doing. I've been playing music because I play music for music's sake. And now all of a sudden I find that every single, I'm sorry, if, I, if, I, if I'm saying, you know, as a whole, but a lot, a lot of groups all have colors. Or to play a gig now, the, my pakay lahat eh. At yung pakay na yun, may kulay. Na, you, know, you know what I mean? I mean, I respect those who have that rage against the machine ideology. I do. I really do. But that's rage against the fucking machine. Ultra militant. Never fucking sold out. Never fucking sold out. But now all of a sudden you have... I'm sorry. But I guess... I guess they really believe in what they want to believe. What just makes me sad is there. There, there seems to be no platform... There are few. Well, there are few. They're just you just have to find them. But there's so few that that you know are celebrating music, that wanna play gigs for the gig's sake, not for for a color. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I refuse to play. That's why everything that I've been doing and sharing with my audience on 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 my social media is. You know, I mean, I shouldn't be talking about it because you know it takes out the coolness of it, but I have a point in it. I'm, I'm playing Pantera, I'm playing Stone Devil Pilots, I'm playing Deftones, because I enjoy it, I love it, and it's the thing that has been keeping me sane. Because as soon as I look in, you know, in the internet, Web 2, it's all chaos. Friends all of a sudden are... Mm -hmm. Friends so, are all of a sudden fucking Nazis. You know what so, I'm saying? You know, Oh, so the, the blockchain, what, what, what I wanted to say, and I'm sorry, I'm talking so much. Is this, this is the first time I'm talking, Ronnie. Sorry. And you know me. You know me, girl. I mean, there. And for the first time, I'm talking. And shit, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. You know, so, you know, given that, you know, there's, there is all this tension in the air. And I think this is why, you know, rock will eventually really have its come up and its resurgence again because you know it's a way for people to heal and share emotions and it's it's a kind of genre that really you know it brings people together and people forget yeah that. so yeah that said you know moving back into the collector verse so you know we have this great new platform where you know it's taking every, you know, it's taking out all of the chaos right now and pulling everyone back together for what brought them to the dance in the first place. And it's really that love, that love yeah. for art, that love for popular culture. Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, that said, how how is it for you now knowing that, you know, your legacy, your work, your artistry is going to be forever minted on the blockchain through there the collectiveverse and a platform exactly. where everyone gets a chance to uh, flourish and enjoy art for art. Exactly, exactly. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you for leading me there. Um, okay, I'm going to try to explain it my way. That's the idea of a blockchain. When I was saying before, there are pros and cons, right? The pros is this. It's a private blockchain it's a crypto code, basically, where the members, those who join, are protected in terms of their identity mm -hmm. and where there's order in a blockchain, in that blockchain, in this case, the Collectiverse. If you're part of there, everybody, it's a 100% it's a democracy. See, that's what's utopic. If you fuck around, you can get kicked out. That's simple. Whoever's in the blockchain. Now, that's the pro. The con is, and I'm going to be fair, who will decide, everybody, how will that happen? 
again, everybody talks about democracy, this and that, but is there true democracy where everybody has a say? It's hard. Maybe there are some cases where there are, but let's just talk about our country. There has to be a governing body. But the idea of a blockchain subscribes to no governing body. See, it's so hard to understand the idea. But because it's so it's there, it's it's so utopic. But when I understood that, there it the problem will be defining it, but understanding that magic idea that fuck, there could be this place in in social media where I don't have to be scared. Mm -hmm. Where I can be myself, nobody will tell me what to play or what not to play. All I have to focus on is my art, whatever I want to share in the blockchain. And the buyers will buy or not. But the point is, I can create it there. It, and if ever somebody does buy it, I know that that person in the blockchain, that it's important for them. To say, again, for me as an artist, when I began this journey, I made music for myself. I, I am selfish that way. My objective at the time was, you know, so that I could make the music, record it into cassette tape, and play it next to Pearl Jam. Right after Even Flow, I'll play my song. Yeah, it's, it's, it's narcissistic and it's selfish, but I made music for me. But as time went on, all of a sudden, I joined this super band. Little did I know it would be a super band called Sandwich. And we were making, in the beginning, we were making songs. And then all of a sudden, we got songs that we liked. That, that, and, and then we got big because a lot of people liked it. And like any musician will say, who's prof I mean, in the industry, that there would... All of a sudden, it trickles down pressure from people, from, from management that, oh, you have to make a hit single. What the fuck does that mean? You have to make a song like this again, or you have to make a new kind of sound. You have to look this way. You have to look that way, which, you know, which is fun. Mm -hmm. But I'm 42 years old. You know, after a while, it gets tiring because at the end of the day, I realized that, which is why also it's, it's another reason why I've been recording all these songs, apart from getting a brand new guitar from Lyric. Thank you very much. You know, it, it's inspiring me to revisit what made me love it, what made me enjoy it, which is listening to the old shit. So I remember, Ronnie, we had a conversation. You asked me, what am I listening to now? And the only bands that the music I was listening to was the music I listened to then. Like the toys, they give me so much joy. And all the more now, they give me so much joy to perform, to learn how to fucking play. To learn how to finally sing it. But in the collective verse there, with what I understand with it, and I, I'm sure we'll talk about it more later, I see it as the future. I want, if I'm going to make new music, which I haven't done in a while, that's where I want to do it. Fuck songs, albums, you know what I mean? NFTs. And that's exciting for me. Especially that I'm backed by a wonderful family. The Collectivers, like all of them, Sir Oscar, Mamshara, Will, Tara, the list goes on. These people, we, we worked on the NFTs, you know. As a start, the first three that they made for me, they're beautiful pieces of art. And especially, like, some of them, like, I had to, to find bits and pieces of me. Because one of the things that Oscar said when when we were getting to know each other was that he didn't know these things about me. I mean, look, this is the first time I'm doing Facebook live. I don't like that, but I know you, Ronnie. I know who, who I'm going to be talking with later and that's why I'm comfortable. So what am I trying to say? That's why I'm yeah, confident I ab about it. Cause you know, I'm working with a family, with a real team, with real faces. It's not just a fucking contract. It's not just a fucking business deal, dude, you know? They're family really to that, me. It's really that sense of family that brought you to this. So maybe we, yeah. uh, before we have the, 
because we will be queuing the NFTs in a couple of minutes here. Maybe we can take a step back and talk about your journey uh, with Anatoys and uh, how, you know, this partnership, this family really came about. So um, I believe it all started with a collectible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Palpatine collectible. Maybe you can tell us all about the Palpatine collectible and we can build from there. Exactly. Um, so um, my second cousin, Ryan Guzman, was working for for Anatoys towards the end of last year and I had just quit Provinciano. So, you know, I mean, I just wanted to, I realized in, in that lockdown, because as soon as lockdown happened, we were the first group to fucking brave it. Let's go. And I, it excited me. I wanted to be part of it. Let's go. Brave new world. Let's, let's make fucking stories and shoot it and act in a time of fucking death and danger. It excited me. But after a while there, I mean, you know, being away from my family, I realized, God damn, I miss my fucking dad. My dad is 68 years old. You know, I want to spend time with him. I want to spend time with my girlfriend, with my brother. You know, I want to play music again. Shit. I want to bomb at home for a while. And I think that I deserve that because I work my ass off. Every single fucking day. So when I got back, you know, it took me time to come back to earth, to get rid of the anxiety, you know, the kapraningan, PTSD of, of COVID, of, you know, alcohol and, and making sure I have a mask on. And I mean, it, it was taxing on all of us. But when I got back and I finally, you know, was slowing down, Ryan Guzman calls me and he goes, guess what? I'm working for Anatoys. I'm like, Anatoys? And he's like, dude. So he invites me over to the factory. And you can see it, the video's on. So I go, <laughs> I go with a grab cab with my mask on, you know, and everything, alcohol, Lysol. And it's a warehouse. So coming from Provinciano, I'm like, what is this, a fucking a, a drug den? You know what I mean? Or, 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 you, you know what I mean? And anyways, he brings me in and God damn, it's a warehouse of fucking Toys, toys, the statues, the collectibles, the, the, you know what I mean? And so it was a surprise, a wonderful surprise. And that's where I met Oscar and his beautiful, beautiful, immaculate wife, Shara. And some of the team, Will, Will, he was still quiet then. But they presented me with this limited edition sideshow collectible mythos statue of, of Darth Sidious, you know, that I had seen beforehand. So I was like, oh, shit. I was acting like a kid. I was crying. I was kneeling on the floor. And then from there, they gave me another one, a Mumra, Iron Giant, the new one, the new statue. And, you know, it was just kid. It was, a, it was, it was grown-ups acting like fucking kids. And I loved it. And then so after that whole thing, you know, I was, I was still shaking. Um... Miss Shara and Oscar invited me to lunch in the same building, and that's where we started geeking out, Sir Oscar and me. You know, I mean, here's this, this gentleman, for lack of a better term, fucking geeking out with me about the Avengers, about, you know, movies, about our favorite comics. So we were getting along. And then, mom, I mean, I had my girlfriend with me, and I, I mean, I can't help but say it, but one of the best tells about a man is the woman he's with. So I'm looking at this man. We're getting along, you know. I never thought we would, but fuck, we did. I love Oscar. But I was watching his beautiful wife, and she was so caring. And at the same time, you know, a strong, independent woman. And I could see the relationship. Like, that's why you're in love with each other. And I fell in love with him. So did my girlfriend. A wonderful meal together. And then that was it. And then, as a friend, there, Oscar gives me a call and starts talking about NFTs. I had no idea what NFTs were. And this was late last year. And then it had something to do with, 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 with a blockchain. I mean, what the fuck is a blockchain? Because all I knew was that people were into this thing called crypto where you invest and then you buy digital coins and whatever that meant. 
So, you know, I mean, I was interested because he, in, 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 in our conversation, he wanted me to just, you know, find out what it was all about. So I did my research. He sent me a couple of links and it fucking blew my mind. Because again, I mean, someone like Mike Shinoda was already doing it two years before. And then when I started understanding what a non-fungible token was, what a blockchain is or can be, you know, I was like, fuck. And then I did more and more research. And then, then I started, you know, I wanted to meet Nasino Oscar and Mom Shara and be like, shit, this NFT thing. What the fuck, dude? And then they were like, see, we told you. But they never shoved it down my throat. They just, you know, because again, we had this family thing. But I was the one geeking out. I was like, so wait, so is this an NFT? And they're like, exactly. And then they were explaining more about it. And I saw the promise of it. And they allowed me that, you know, they gave me the time. They didn't pressure. They didn't talk about anything. And that's how I got into it. Because, again, with the idea of, of, of blockchains and NFTs, I saw it as the fut- a possible future of collecting. It's still intangible. It's not fully formed yet, but it's happening. And I can't help but believe, I choose to believe that it will be the future it is the future it may take time or it may happen tomorrow but it's it's a brave new you know it's the wild wild west all of a sudden again with a promise of true fandom and true artistry protected you know what i mean as opposed to in web 2 where it's all chaos and and music can be copied and downloaded and i mean it's okay it's okay but it loses its magic Value. What makes it unique? It's value. It's special. Minted. You know, I mean, between between you and I, again, if we, we said it, regardless of the media, if Pearl Jam all of a sudden said that they would release black in any form, shape, or, or value as fans, we would buy it. Bakit? Kasi mahal natin eh. Mahal na mahal natin. Yung artist, yung music. If Pearl Jam, or let's say a band that hasn't played for so long, um, Helmet, Nine Inch Nails. Mm-hmm. Let's say Nine Inch Nails all of a sudden releases a brand new single, but it's on NFT. I am such a fan. Fuck, I'll go in there. I don't give a fuck about the value. And again, that because I love Nine Inch Nails and I want to know what they're up to. I want to listen to their new song. It's a fuck. And then, sorry to use the word, but it's an investment for me, for my sanity, for my joy, for my happiness, as what? As a fan. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I basically got into it. And there, and then seeing it now, like, I've noticed that a lot of my colleagues, fellow musicians, friends, I mean, they're happy for me and interested, but I noticed that they're, they're still observing. They're still waiting. They're still trying to understand, which I completely respect. Mm-hmm. It's just that I chose to dive in. Why? Because I trust and love my team, the Collectiverse team. I love them all. I know them all. They all have faces. It isn't a fucking scam. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I'm looking forward to is creating art with them when they tell me to. So as of now, there. Um, I mean, they can explain it later. And what I can say now, I mean, I, I already posted a teaser of the NFTs. So there, okay, there are NFTs already. But you know, I'm looking... With, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you know, uh, with, with that said, because I'm sure a lot of people here uh, joining us in the stream have yet to take a look at your NFTs. Maybe mm-hmm. we could actually pull up the NFTs now and maybe you can walk us through there. each one. So right now we are looking at focus um yeah. and it's something you told me um in regards to your nfts earlier that really struck with me uh was about how the nfts ultimately tell a story for you because the nfts represent who you are who you want yeah. to be and ultimately everything you've done in your life so with this piece focus what what does it mean to you what does it represent 
what takeaway can fans take from Focus? That's the thing. And when, when Mom Shara, um, so again, she was the visionary who came up with this, and Will was the one, was the artist making it. Oh, here we go. We have, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mam Shara and Sir Oscar. Welcome See to the there. Thanks so much See for joining the real us. faces. And we yeah, also have Will that, here that, as well. Everyone. Will, see, can I just talk? That's Mam Shara, that beautiful, immaculate woman. She's <laughs> the visionary. If we were making a film, she's the director. Beside her is Mr. Oscar. <laughs> The triple, triple OG executive producer, my friend, my buddy. Love you, buddy. All right? Under is Will, the most shy, quiet Virgo I've ever met. However, he was the hands that created this. He's the, he's the cameraman. He's the DOP. So there, I love him. See, there they are. That's, that's, that's my team, yo. And I'm proud to be with him. See, now I'm getting fucking Santi. Fuck, man. That's my team, guys. We're the collectivers. So I love them so much. So is it okay if I start talking about this one, guys? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so this is Focus. This is the rare one. So when, when, I, when we made the deal, they brought me to this nice restaurant. You know, this nice, cozy restaurant. I was with my girlfriend and they, they presented us the art. When I saw this one, I I literally felt, you know, like, fuck, man. Because I told, basically, again, in, in making, in getting to know each other, I couldn't help myself. When when I trust someone, I just start talking. And now you 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 can tell, all of you can tell it. So I was talking about everything and, and Oscar and Sharon, Will, they were just listening and absorbing. So they knew everything about me from, you know, wanting to be a rock star and conquering the world and, you know, being irreverent and, you know, bastusana. They also knew about my fears in that, in that, in that, um, in that journey. So, but go back to focus first. The, the first one, the, the, that one. So when they showed that to me, all of a sudden I was taken aback because it felt like that they knew me because it's there. It, it, it's, a, it, it, it's not, I, I don't take it as angas looking. I take it as vulnerable. That's right. More than cool. It's vulnerable because underneath it is, is bone. Is a, is a hollow eye, is a hollow nose, you know, and that's who, and, and they know this. Now I'm going to share it with all of you. They know that that's Marco because that's what my mom named me. That was my nickname, Marco. Only my best friends know that my name is Marco. It's not Mark. I changed it. I made it Mark when I was grade two, but they know that's Marco. And that's why it's important for me because... There, it's it's unsettling because it's it's naked, but it it's important for me because it touches me, it affects me. Because I'm vulnerable in that piece of art that Will made, again under the vision of direct, direct Shara. So, I mean, look, I mean, I'm wearing a skull ring, but it's different when you see that your face is cut in half, and that's what's under. A hollow yeah, skeleton, you. you know. What I mean? yeah, that's really you. Yeah. You're two personas. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got the this pakul side that you know, pa elusive shit, but underneath it, he feels hollow. And then I think part a part of this piece of art is it's called focus. Yeah. In revisiting my music, I mean, it was just a haze when Quan started. But by the second album, it was even hazier because, you know, we were top of the charts. We were infamous for, for what we did live, you know. And listening to that second album, even friends said, I remember it took me aback. One of my good friends, my bandmate at the time, Jarrell said, because his friend, Pochoy Labog of Dicta License said, if ever Mark wrote 
an honest song. It was focus. And when I listen to focus, because I remember how I write music is I write the music, I hum along to it because I, I, I choose to use my voice as an instrument more than as a, you know, more than as a, a, a philosopher when it comes to singing. And then I just put words unconsciously. And if it, if it fits in terms of sound phonetically, then it's fit. And I mean, then it fits. But then when I, when I research the song, and my team knows this, Shara knows this, Oscar knows this, Wills knows this, that that's the song, that's the most honest song I ever wrote. So that's why the title is Focus. It's very, there, it's unsettling, but it's, it's, it's brutally honest for me. So when they showed it to me, I was like, you know, damn, that's me naked. So I don't know, but is it, I mean, I know that there, Mom Shara said it, that's you, Marco. Yeah. Will, the vibe. It is. Oh. And Will, I mean, Will knows me. I mean, I pretend to be this this larger than life guy. I mean, I can't help it. I've done it for years. My parents are all larger than life, and that's the truth. But that's that's me. The real one. You know. Okay. That's the what what what's that one called? The tight I mean okay. The one is rare. This is the collectible. What, what, collectible. This is the collectible. This is Bastusa Yes. So when when they showed this one to me, I was screaming. I was like, hell yeah, god damn, I look hot because I couldn't, you know, there's a part of me that disassociates from this piece of art. But when I saw it with I mean and and I look back at my pictures, it encapsulates everything that I wanted. To happen, and and I I have to give a backstory. I'm I'm sorry. Like okay, so sandwich exploded, ninety eight, ninety nine. Goddamn, I was eighteen, nineteen years old. I was in college. I was still studying. So, thank God, I was able to graduate. You know that that I mean that's the ethic my, my parents instilled in me, diba. Right? But I was I was playing, fucking. Mayrix. And for all of you who know Mayrix or were there, there, that was me under one of the gaslight studying, you know, sociology. But, but you know, <laughs> I made it. And then, but Sandwich happened, you know? Sandwich happened. And, and all of a sudden, the band was bigger than life. And no one prepared me for that fame. That's the thing, though. And nobody talks about it, you know, because... Musicians and rock stars are supposed to be untouchable, you know, are supposed to be gods. But the thing is there, for the first time I'm saying it, nobody prepared me for that, for fame, the good and the bad. So um, we released two albums, you know, we won awards, we played, you know, gigs with people moshing, with people who knew the songs. But, you know, again, my background was, you know, I was this, I was this 15, 14 year old kid who hated bullies and just had music and nothing else and make music for myself. And all of a sudden, and this is a true story, the bullies are all of a sudden making friends with me and telling me so much stuff. So, you know, I, I decided to take a break at the same time. So the second album came out around 2001. I just graduated. So, but the band knew that, you know, after we do the launch, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go abroad and, and soul search. So anyways, I was supposed to be a director. Like my mother I was supposed to go to a film school. But I wigged out. I wigged out. And I came back home. And I remember as soon as I... We still lived in, in a horseshoe in, in Helltop. Helltop. And then I called Kelly Mangas, my bassist, my best friend forever. And I was freaking out, you know, I was panicking. I was like, Kelly, what are we going to do? You know, I was supposed to do this. Fuck, I don't know what to do. Uh, you know, you know I mean, and then the only, what he said just made sense. He said, let's form a band and play the music that you want, Mark. And then everything started to make sense because I always wanted, what was nice about Sandwich was that we were many and we were of different ages with different musical tastes, trying to make music in a democratic kind of way. 
and it worked. That, that was the magic of Sandwich. But I wanted to do more, which is why there we formed Kwan. I wanted a different side of me because when I grew up, I listened to The Doors. I wanted to be Jim Morrison. I listened to Jimi Hendrix. I listened to Led Zeppelin because of my father. I wanted to be Robert Plant. I wanted to be sensual. I wanted to make songs with big rock riffs and big rocks, you know, not... I mean, no disrespect, but I just wanted a rock band. And you know, at the time, Audio Slave was out, you know, something like that, there, like that, like that. I wanted... And, and so when they showed me that, that photo, the, the first one, the Bastusana with, with me backwards, I mean, I felt like, you know, still again, separate from it, not, okay, I, I did pull it off. For how many years? I mean, Kwan has been together since 2003. And I pulled it off because that captures it. So like when I walk to people, I mean, they say, Hoy pare, is sandwich, hoy pare, one look, but more often than that, it's bastusana, you know what I mean? And, and, and that's, in our hit song was Daliri. And, you know, I originally recorded everything. I made the song, presented it to the band. Of course, it became different again when the band, when the band performs it. And that's the point of having a band, you know, is to have different artists play it their way and, and put their, their personality in it. But, there, the, ta- the point of Bastu- of Daliri, funny, as an anthem, which I, th- I mean, I can't help but observe that it is for a, for a lot of people, and I'm, I'm grateful, was there. I wanted to make an anthem like in, in, in the same spirit as a Smells Like Teen Spirit. Do we know the words of Smells Like Teen Spirit? Do we know the meaning of Smells Like Teen Spirit? You can argue me any day, but at the end of the day, we didn't know shit. As soon as you play Smells Like Teen Spirit, everybody goes ape shit. And that was the goal with Daliri. And then at the end of it there, I screamed Bastusana. And it was an outtake. But um, our, 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 our sound engineer slash producer, Angie Rosul, one of the most brilliant men, he kept it in there. And all of a sudden now there, when people see me, Bastusana, pare, Bastusana. So with the title and that, with me doing that, like a classic rock pose, like, you know, Waylon, I was like, Wow, man, you know, I can show that to my kids and say, you know, your dad was really badass and cool once upon a time. And that's it. You know what I mean? So that's why it's important to me. And, and that's why then I think um, the team and I chose to make it there, the most accessible one. Because I think for those who know me and my music and what I've done, that encapsulates what I was, you know what I mean? What I, what I made myself to do after meeting Kelly and forming Kwan and being in Kwan and succeeding and failing, but they captured it. And it makes me feel fulfilled because I did it. I did it. And I can be proud of that. And I don't have to become it anymore because I did it, I accomplished it, and my team captured it. Under Shara's vision, Will captured it. And I'm proud of it. You know what I mean? Bastusana, motherfucker. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Am I talking too much? <laughs> Sorry. All good, man. All good. But, but there, I mean, Will, do you want to talk about it? I mean, you're a dude, but there's a lot of sensuality in that, in your art. <laughs> I mean, like Will, like I remember I got close to to Will because I told them how I, how I met Oscar and, and Shara. Will, when, when the works were presented, all of a sudden, you know, I started, you know, as in Terminator, like my eyes went to, who, who created it though? This motherfucker, Will. And then I remember that he was there when I got the Darth Sidious. He was always there. He was seeing me geek out. And finally, we had, when we had our quiet moment, there, we exchanged numbers. I mean, that's a big thing for me. Sa totoo, to sir, uh, sir Mark, sa totoo lang, sir, kinakabahan pa ako that time. Kasi, <laughs> syempre, <laughs> um, ang alam ko, sir, ikaw yung pinakamagaling na villain, di ba? <laughs> parang, parang, <laughs> oh, kasi talagang, nung um, nabalitaan ko na pupunta kayo sa uh, studio na magkaroon ka ng shoot, and then, lahat kami yung kinakabahan. 
Kasi <laughs> tatakot kami baka kasama mo si Hipo- Hipolito, di ba? Oo. Kasi warehouse pa. Baka magkaroon ng bari lang, di ba? Oo, oh, <laughs> oh, sakto. Okay. Oo. Pero nung time na naka-work ko si Sir Mark, solid. Solid. <laughs> Sobrang bait. Sobrang generous. Um, lahat, as in lahat ng photos niya, kasi kailangan namin ng photos for reference na para sa artwork niya. And then, binigay niya lahat. As in, simula bata siya. As in, baby. <laughs> binigay niya sa amin. As in, then you should tell them, you should share to them your experience with this pastusan. Diba? Paano mo naging Ayan. nakuha highly detailed and accurate yung mga tattoo ni Mark Abaya? Yeah. That, ah, um, that, that, ano, meron kayong ibang group? Iba kang chat? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Time. I'm sorry, uh, Sarah. Uh, Laglaga na. We do. Um, <laughs> we'll have our own. We have to share it. Uh, Paano yung mga mga artwork niya? Parang sinilip na ni Wilto. That's why. I'm sorry. Parang may nakita pa something part. Parang <laughs> no, 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 honestly, how was your journey here? Did yeah. you, how did you come up Uh-oh. with a highly accurate um, body art of Mr. Mark Abaya? Mark Abaya. Uh, that time, parang um, nagahanap kami ng um, tattoo, specific tattoo ni Sir Mark, and then kung ano, kung saan part yung mga tattoo niya para at least accurate dun sa artwork. And so then, what did we do? Um, what did I yeah, send and you, then, buddy? <laughs> Nag-send si Sir Mark ng photos niya doon sa group chat namin. As yung in... sa Dibdib, sa mga aso, <laughs> yan. But, Tsaka under the belly. <laughs> Nag-send sa akin ng private message si Sir Mark under the private yeah. belly. <laughs> And then may nakasilipat ako. <laughs> oh, pare. And I was like, you know, I tried to erase it but I was like, But Will was like, you know, show me your 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 tattoos, and you know, as 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 the artist, I knew that he had to see everything, and there are some that are there. <laughs> so what I said, okay. That's why. That's why. Yeah. The, Actually, artwork. he was very awesome. shy pa to ask it from you. Sabi ko, who's the best person to ask? Is it you or me? Shepherd, go, di ba? Sabi ko, so I have to think about every detail of the big picture. How can you come up yeah. with that, di ba? Yes. Kasi makukuha yung detalye niyan. So, yun. Wow. And then and then That's yung background, it. yung background is inad namin yung speed. Ah, Every okay, detail. okay. Yeah. Di ba basta sa nat was may good speed yeah. ng beer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Beer All speed. right. Fuck, <laughs> now lang I saw that. Now lang I realized that shit. God yeah, damn. Yeah, wrong rule. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking buy this shit, di ba? I, I want to show it to my kids. <laughs> You know when the time comes. <laughs> yun, yun. Okay, see? I saw a new one. I didn't know that. That's the spit. Oh, you didn't That's know. Like, yeah. Uh, I, thought, oh, I thought it was okay. beautiful art. You no, know, I no, thought no, it was no. abstract. Just, actually, we were <laughs> yeah. brainstorming it, diba? We'll remember. Sabi ni Will. Yes. Ano ko yung background ilalagay ko? Sabi ko, I don't, what, is the scenario, what is the scene here, ba? And then he explained it to me, okay, when you were ending a, sh- a show yata or your performance. And then I was browsing your photos because you sent us a lot of, of photos. Sabi ko, eh, bakit hindi lang itong spit niya? Di ba? Performance yeah. pala. And it looks yeah. so nice talaga. And a lot of people yeah. have this artwork already. Yeah. That's there. That's that's our wonderful director. If we had one, Ma'am Shara. And yeah. there. It's, right. it's, the, <laughs> it's her vision. And there. So also in our chat, that's what we talk about. We always praise Ma'am Shara. Because she's the she's look oh it's it's three sorry to use the word three dicks and one beautiful woman to balance us all out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. This beautiful woman who there, I mean that's why I, I mean, apart from Will, there so so now you know Will, see? He's a real guy and he's he's got passion and look oh he's repping his work. And one of the things that Will told me when we were talking, when we had our, well, we, we did the extra shots, bro, and then we were yeah, outside, yes, right. was that Will wanted to create art that even he would fucking buy. You know what I mean? Regardless if it's me. And for me, that, that's the shit. You know, that's, that's, 
he didn't have to say anything else. So I trust this guy. And this was after even the art was created already. So when he said it, that's why he wants to improve on it. He wants to work with Mom, under Mom Shara's vision and explain it to me and have the synergy of both. You know what I mean? But the point that he said that when he creates something, he wants to fucking buy it. That's right. Right. That's yeah. the point of it, isn't it? I mean, and I can relate with him because when I make songs, I want to fucking listen to it. Because if I make a song and I don't want to listen to it, fuck that shit. Then I'm selling out. You know what I mean? And so there. So Will is also rock and roll in that sense. But there, I mean, beyond me and Will is Mom Shara. Because she understands me. I mean, and I mean this with the most fucking respect. She understands me as a woman understands a man and his idiosyncrasies and his vulnerability, his bullshit and his honesty and beauty. I mean, that's, that's why women, that's why we love women so much. That's what, because they're better than us in that sense. So what better director, what better creative head than her? You know what I'm saying? And she, they were able to capture it. So she's able to understand me and have a vision a fair vision, not just a macho vision, and then, you know, communicate it to Will, and then even I get it from my stories because she's a good listener. She's a wonderful empath and a bossing at that. So, you know, and then, so, so there, see, it's the both of them that created that together. So when I saw this piece of art, this is the one naman that there I was so excited for. I was so excited because I'm sure that you know, um, again, those those who are fans of what I've done through the years will be like, putang ina si Abaya yan. Tapos ano title? Puta, bastos, ano pare? Yeah, no, no, this is really for that. your fans, Mark. This is really for yeah. your fans. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And yeah. and I hope, I hope, you know, they love it as much as we do. Because again, we created this all together. They're not a separate entity. We're all one. We're all friends. We all have our own secret Viber chat groups. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You know what I mean? But but it's a relationship that we all have. Whenever we create these pieces. And there. So that's Bastusana. And then we saw Focus. And there's one more, which is the legendary one. Mm -hmm. We and have it's that called, up right now. Yeah. The <laughs> Did it freeze? No. 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 It played on our okay. end. We can play it again. Yeah, play it again, please. Yeah, let's, please. Play it, let's play it one more time. I mean, I'm 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 confused because again, I'm sorry to share, but in the time of the lockdown, but there's a we all of us. I'd like to think did a lot of introspecting, remembering, and there. I mean, again, one of the first things when we started talking about NFTs, Yun, triple triple OG, Oscar, my brother, my shug knight. You know what I'm saying? So when when we were bonding and talking, and I mean. Mam Shara was the one na nakatutok, you know, absorbing every everything. And the way I felt was like Oscar was just there observing as a man, as a man would, you know. And but when he took me aside and he said, "Mark, I like your story, but you have to go deeper." Because I was just telling, you know, the rise and the fall starting from Sandwich. So when he said that, I was like, oh, shit. What do you mean? Like, 
like childhood shit. And then he goes deeper, as deep as you can get. That's what Oscar told me. So, dude, literally, I went through boxes of photos, of demos. And I found that photo. And it's not cringy for me because that's Marco, the fat, chubby guy with a Chicago Bulls hat. Because at the time, you had to wear that hat with a black sweater playing. This is funny. Uh, an Epiphone. One of those fake ones from Santa Mesa. My first guitar, which I bought for 800 pesos at the time. And I was, you know. And, and also in, in the process of, of, of digging, I found cassette tapes. So I actually went to Facebook Market and bought a tape player because most of my demos were in cassette tape format. You know, I mean, I had a quarter inch reel recorder, but I would transfer it to cassette tape so that it would be accessible so I could play it in the car. And um, there I found the first song that I had ever written. And I was probably 15 or 16 years old. And a backstory behind that was because there I started as a guitar player. And I was in this band and we won several Battle of the Bands, you know, classic garage band playing Rage Against the Machines, War Pigs, playing um, Pearl Jam's Animal, playing Sunshine of Your Love. But... The, the problem was that the band wanted to do covers in there. And, and, and we had played with Razorback. But at that same time, Razorback was already starting to play their own songs. So I wanted to play originals. But the band didn't seem too interested in that. So that broke my heart, I remember. So I decided to leave the band. But at the same time, my father, just like my mother, who were completely, completely supportive, you know, with whatever it is I chose to do. And I chose to do music. My dad had this quarter inch recorder, like the real thing, like a clack, one of those things with four tracks, two tracks on the left, two tracks on the right. So, you know, when I was in that depression at 13 years old, you know, I started fiddling with it. Okay, I can record guitar like this. If you can record, if you can play guitar, you can play bass. So that's easy. Herein lies the rub. Singing. Oh, shit. So, but Buti na lang, Alice in Chains released um, that album, Jar of Flies, at the time where it was acoustic. And then I realized, oh, so all I have to do to sing, because, you know, I wasn't a singer, was I just had to make the same sound as the guitar, you know? So I found that tape. And then it was funny because uh, along with the picture and that and the music, the last song that I had released on my own Outside Quan, because the last song that Quan released, I think, was in 2014 or something. It was called Hyperconnected. Didn't do that well. You know, I, in 2017, I released a song by myself. I worked with um, Yellow Room Music with Monty, and I made him a deal. I was like, you know what, bro? I just need to write this song and record it, and I need Track Studio, which is now closed. And But Yellow Room was holding it, so let's make a deal. Basically, the deal was... Keep everything. I don't care. All I need from you is unlimited time in the studio for free. And I want to see it on Spotify. You can keep everything else. And sweet, I mean, booting along, it worked out. So, you know, I was proud of that song because I was alone and I was naked. I was playing acoustic, you know, and all the melodies, I was playing the drums. And everything was, you know, the grunge way. Yung parang when you listen to it, it's, it's, it's about to break, but it doesn't which I love about band music, you know, it's not perfect. It's organic. It's, it's analog. And that's why it was in track studio. And I realized that, damn, the last song I released is a mirror of the first song I ever created. And then wow. when, when I, this is one of the stories and see, Mam Shara knows that story, eh? <laughs> that, 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 that insight. So that's why, and so in the making of this legendary NFT called Two Trick Ponies, hmm. that's a sandwich song, by the way. But see, Two Trick Ponies, is, it's two versions of me. Yes. Marco right. and Marco now. Marco Abaya. And, the, and so you have two visuals and you have sound bites of both to hear it and you see it. So the way I see it is, you know, I... I find it charming. I mean, usually I'd be, yeah, you know, oh my God, oh my God, it's me, but I'm not. Because 
the ba, I'm older na and I like looking back and saying, wow, that's where I, that's where I came from. And it, that, this NFT captures it. So it's, it's you beautiful. know, it's, it's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Sir Mark, natandaan, natandaan, natandaan ko, Sir Mark, natandaan ko lang yung sinabi mo sa akin na si Marco is um, tumutugtog lang sa patay sa piyesta. Oh. Di ba? Oh. Di ba? Oh. Tumutugtog sa piyesta, oh. sa birthday, di ba? Ngayon, oh, correct. yung si, uh, si Mark, Mas na, uh, <laughs> and who would have thought? And the, exactly, I, I told Will that. And it's just looking back. I mean, I have fond memories of pre-lockdown, of, of that, of that feeling. And the audience, you know, and sharing the music and everybody singing along. And I loved it. I loved it. But... I feel that there, lockdown changed everything. And and my family, the collectivists, they know where my mind's at, you know. I'm looking to the future. But what's nice about that piece, again, all of these NFTs are works of art that we work on together. I can't stress that enough. With I didn't, your, I didn't well, pay, yeah. exact, exactly. We were talking about it. We were disagreeing about it. We were yeah. agreeing with it. You know, it was a team effort. It was a family effort. It's not just a team. I don't work for them. They don't work for me. That's that's Sarah. That's Oscar. That's that's fucking Will. And they know me as Marco. You know, and these NFTs capture everything that I was about. That I think that I personally, I mean, I don't know what you think of me. You probably think I'm a dick, which is okay. But that's what I think of me. And I feel a personal connection with them. Because again, we worked on it as a family, together. And then the secondary thing again, but then that's them for you. But for me, it's, it's, I'm, I'm selfish about it. And I'm proud of these NFTs, you know, because they captured what I was. And from where I was to where I am now, from the illusion of pastusana to the nakedness of, of you know, the unsettlingness of, of focus. These are all aspects of me that my family, these artists, I mean, express through their art because they took everything I gave. And, you know, when I love someone, I keep on talking. All my best friends know this. I keep on talking and talking, say <laughs> stupid things, say st- smart things, say offensive things, say brilliant things once in a while. But only, see, Oscar's laughing because he knows it's true. Right. The people who love me, who know me as Marco, they know this. And the, but before this, I would always, it was a, always a conscious effort and, you know, to be elusive, to be untouchable, to be unscarred, to be cool. And for the first time there with this family, I'm, I'm even doing this. I've never done this. I've never spoken this much. I've never spoken my mind. But I'm so comfortable because I'm around family. These people have become my family. They're real. We have a, we have a fucking relationship. It isn't just a business deal. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, the, and there, a funny insight is, again, the way Ronnie and I started this conversation was geeking out with toys. It's toys, man. It's childhood. It's that joy. It's that ratatouille moment when that asshole fucking ate the ratatouille and, oh my God, I'm a kid. And it was the best meal ever. That's what it's like working with this team. Every day is ratatouille. Oh oh my God. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm so proud to be with them. And I'm, I'm there again. I've talked so much. And see, I... I didn't even have to really ask them to be here. They're here with me, like my family, you know? And they're just letting me talk. Probably later they'll be like, but later they'll be like, Mark, you said too much. (laughs) 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 You you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said that thing with you. Yeah, you know? What what I like about Two Trick Tony, uh, Two two Trick Ponies, is that when Shara mentioned about the concept about putting you in the blockchain. Actually, pinaglaban ko yan, Mark. (laughs) <laughs> I know, I know. Will told me, ma'am. Will told me <laughs> everything. I, Will. I, I told Oscar, um, we want the people, the, we want the people to pay attention to the music, not just on the yeah. air. Yeah. What matters is the song, 
Repine is it's an, an unreleased single, diba? Yeah. But during it's your a, age, it's, yeah. Years, yeah. And I was telling Oscar at the end of the day, what will what we do will fade. Our names will fade, but a good song will never fade. Amen. And, and, and I like the way I like the way the team executed because they put Repine and they put the, the last song that you played for is it Juan? And you put it no, together. That was, yeah, that, that was me alone, man. And that was alone. the demo. That's yeah, a demo, that right? was the demo version. So nobody will ever hear that. Yeah, you know the, uh, right. the demo of Red Bleeds to Blue. Red yeah. Bleeds to Blue. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And it's what, a masterpiece, right? What, what I like about the story behind it is that like you were destined to be, I mean, to be who you are now, the legend who you are now. And now we're forever grateful because you are in the blockchain. Right? So and am I. So am I. So fans like us would be so delighted to see you and, you know, be remembered for this forever. Yeah, man. So, Thank you. Right. It's like you guys, that's why you guys gave me literally a new playground. You know? And fuck yeah. Because there, I mean, I've been doing this since I was 19 years old. And it's the same shit. It changed with Spotify again. What I was talking about earlier to Ronnie was there, the, the casual listener. Now, if you love a band, more often than not, you just like a song. If you really love the band, you'd know right. every song on that album. Every right. song. And your right. favorite song would be the least known song. Right. You know what I'm saying? And... When, when I was talking to Ronnie earlier, that, that's what I said. That's, that's the promise that I see with this blockchain. You know what I mean? Because it's secure. And walang casual listener na Kung may bumili nun, it's because it's important to them. The same way that, and that's important to me because I create art for myself. And you guys know this. My family, my collectivist family knows this. When I create art or music, it's for me first. For me to enjoy and I always get nervous and, and, and you know, that you, I'll be judged as soon as I give it out. And it's happened forever. You never get used to that shit. To criticism, to people talking shit. At the same time, people saying good shit. But in the blockchain there, if someone buys it, it's special. And that makes me feel good, you know? And you, you gave me that, that playground. Yeah. And you know what, Mark? Somebody just bought your focus just now. It's Christopher. Oh, yeah. He messaged. Got Christopher. your focus. He, idol, he said. Chris Christopher Rufo. Christopher mm -hmm. Rufo. Right Fuck, here. Man. Thank Christopher you. John Rufo. Got your yeah. NFT. Got your focus NFT idol. Wow. Yeah, just now. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah. Thank you, so man, correct. because that means a lot because that, that, that piece of art, that's the one that, that fucks me up. Yeah. Because there, like there, that's that's me naked. That's the closest to Mark. No, no, no illusion. That's that's Christopher Rufo. Let's be friends on Facebook, man. I'm going to find your ass, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to find your ass and we'll be friends, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for buying it. It's important. And I'm glad you bought it. Oh, here. He, he, he also replied again. Actually, it's the moment you sent the link. Wow. You bought it right away. That's a oh, super fan, dude. That's super you, fan. You, did, you didn't even know the story? Jesus Christ. Christopher, thank you, man. But there. So now that you know the story, dude, I'm, I'm very emotional about it right now. Christopher, thank you so much because the team works so hard on that. Thank you. Yeah. And, thank you know, you thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. And, you know, I'll find you and share more stuff, you know. But there, what you have in your hands as soon as you joined it there is, is me naked. That's how I feel when I see it. So it's a special piece of art. So thank you. And I hope I hope that it makes you proud because it makes us really, really proud and thankful. Thank you for believing in us. 
And you and know what, Mark, of... somebody bought your Bastusa na and he got the number 69. Bastos na oh, Bastos. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! He got the 69! Oh, no! No, 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 no. Sting! Yeah, I call him God. Who is he? What's his, what's his Michael. name? Michael. Michael. Mark. Michael. Yeah. I'm sorry? Marco, Marco. His name is Marco. Marco. Yeah, Marco. Yeah. So is Marco. Marco. yeah, he's a fan. Marco Bastusa na, motherfucker. You got it. <laughs> a stig. Tang ina, a stig. Thank you. Ronnie, would you like to, uh, no, to read the, me- the, the questions they have questions. for Mabaya? Yeah. So Look, you made me sweat. So we have a couple questions here. Sorry. So, <laughs> well, we touched on this briefly. So Patrick Ferrer asked, will your songs become NFTs too? So we touched on this briefly, but what's the future for your songs as NFTs? Okay. Um, I, I want to make this statement now here. And my team knows this because I, I don't have to profess again, but I really love them and I trust them. But they know this. That if I were to make any new song. I would release, meaning write and perform new songs. I'm going to release it in the Collectiverse ecosystem. Awesome. That's why, if, if you notice, guys, again, um, for all of you watching or, you know, who, who are my friends on, on social media, I've only been releasing covers. And again, the purpose for releasing those covers is because these are the songs I grew up loving. These are the songs that helped me and and... It's, it, it's, it's, it brings me, gives me so much joy to play for it. And I love sharing it. Of course, I'm, 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 I'm half scared, but I'm happy because there I'm getting the reactions from the people who I feel are like me, who just want the music, man. They just play the music. So, oh my God, you're playing Stone Temple Pilots. Oh my God, you're playing Deftones. Why don't you play Judith by Perfect Circle? But it's, see, they're covers, and I will continue to do that. However, if I do create new music, I choose to do it in the collective verse because I don't want, I'm, I'm sorry to say this statement, I do not want a casual listener for my new shit. Again, we have all gone through different things in life, especially in light of all the shit going around, good and bad. And my thing is, and, and Oscar and Shara, and even fucking Will knows it, that all I want to do, honestly, I mean, that's why I stopped at Provinciano. I want to be around the people I love as much as I can, spend as much time with them as I can. And in doing so, I can even create music in my here. Like, right, right, where's the computer? Right there. You know what I'm saying? So if I do write music, I don't have to deal with you know, record labels or, or whatever. All I have to do is give it to my family, the collectivers. So if you, if, if, if you find yourself looking for me and, and new music by me, you know where to go. I'll just be there with my family, you know. You don't have to, but if you find yourself looking for me, I'll be there. Thank you. I'll be right there. Fucking albums, man. That's all I was telling them, Oscar, Will, and Shara. Fuck songs. I mean, yeah, songs. We're, we're building it. We're figuring it out creatively as we go together as a team, as a family. And they know that my ultimate, you know, my ultimate goal is to release music. Right. And even they're excited because, Dubai, I mean, I, I, all of a sudden I have a family, a team who can do the visuals on top of it. All I have to do is create the music. And then, you know, they know me enough to know how to complement it visually. And I'm so excited for that. We're just in the beginning of everything, of this whole NFT thing. And that's the point of it. I mean, Bitoy has his own fucking universe that I want to check out. I mean, I was yeah. watching Bitoy when you guys were there. And I was like, Bitoy idol, pare. Whatever you do, I'm going to get it. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. And I can't even wait for the Kramers. Cheska is, you know, we started out in show business together. So I'm like excited. And I'm part of that. So, you know, we're part of that family. We're all together. But what, what I wanted to say, again, my excitement, I lost myself, was that there. Fuck, I want to make music. I want to make albums and release it 
in the collectiveverse, in this wonderfully safe ecosystem where there oh, where where people appreciate it because again oh, it means a lot when someone there just now when 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 Jonathan bought it when Marco bought it I'm I'm like fucking choked up and that, and that's the shit you don't see because it means a lot you know when someone buys the album when someone buys something you worked hard on as an artist because you're naked and you're giving it unless of course you know yeah, I'm do this because everyone will like this I'm sure everyone's going to like this song then you're full of yourself and that's bullshit you got to push it and put yourself on the line in every piece of work and that's what I love about my team because they put themselves on the line as much as I do you know what I mean so it means so much and it me it makes it so much more special so why so why the collective first because of that I feel like if I do write new, new music it will be in a more special place than it is now because again I said this earlier and I'm sorry to say this my family but i think that the world is going right now is not healthy here and but i know that there this too shall pass and the world will become a better place again you know what i'm saying because it is i, I believe in hope and one of those avenues is this ecosystem and you know we can talk about that that's a whole different you know discussion but I'm sorry that I I said so much but the question was simply am I going to release music yes exclusively in the collectiverse thank you and and you know what you know what mark we're not just going to release your music here oh, our dog hold on we're not just going to release your music here basically we're going to put you in games i think the fans Fuck love yeah you. dude yeah because of your nfts we're going to use yeah, it yeah yeah Right. Imagine, yeah. imagine more like hundreds of you celebrities who have an average yeah. followers of what one million each, two million each. That will be like hundred million to two hundred million, right? Game yeah. developers would love to follow us. Game developers would like to. Hey, you know what? Maybe we should put these celebrities on our game, and I want to see you one day. On those, man. I want to see your character there, your Bastusan. <laughs> you know, that would be no, fun. No, no. no, I can't wait to play the game next to Bitoy. And then he's playing. Right. He's, right. He, he's Bitoy is playing Markabai, and I'm playing Bitoy. And I'm like, hey, I'm better than you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's insane, dude. That's insane. And and we can go there. Like, that's I mean, one of the reasons why Oscar said that, and I understand what he's saying, because there, um, NFTs, the potential for NFTs, if only you have to get into it, you have to do your own research and make up your mind. I don't want to sell the idea to you. But what I will say is the pos I believe, my family believes that the possibility, the, what's the word? Of NFTs. What's a better word for possibility? That it's that you're full the potential the potential of nfts is fucking limitless that's right if only there but if i if if, if i talk more i'm going to be selling it to you like everybody's selling political ideologies and we don't want to do that right but i will say that do your own research since that's another thing everybody says i'm sorry to be a dick about okay my family i'm sorry but i'm me there. Everybody says, do your own research, do your own research. I mean it with all humility and encouragement. Do your research about it and find out for yourself so that you'll know now instead of being skeptical. Because there, I mean, what's more important for me in this talk right now is to show you my passion for it. Not numbers, my heart. I want you to see my family who's working with me. I want you to see their faces. I want you to know they're real because we are real. And what we're doing, we're doing out of fucking love. What is it for? One of the first things Sir Oscar ever told me, geeks, fandom. Walang mali siya yun. Walang pakay. 
It's for people who love collecting, whether it's music, whether it's art, you know what I mean? Whether it's a music video, it's the innocence of it. That's why we buy toys. That's why we buy guitars. Halimbawa, and I can talk about that. When I work, if, if you don't mind, like there, like, okay. Now I have a PRS. My God, my dream guitar. Thank you, Lyric. Ooh, shameless plug. But anyways, but before, <laughs> before I hooked up with Lyric, um, my standard was the old. Eh? So when I was growing up, I listened to Led Zeppelin. And my dream guitar at the time was a Gibson Standard, which cost a lot of fucking money. But I worked my ass off. I did the whole Sunday noontime show thing for two years, saved up enough money, and bought that Gibson Standard. And I'm proud of that achievement. I'm proud of it. I bought it for myself. I didn't care about the fucking price. If you want to be greedy about it, okay, you know what? If you buy, I also, okay, I bought it around after my mom passed. So that's around 2014. The value is exponential. But I do not give a fuck about that. I will not sell that guitar because it is important to me. That's a collector, isn't it? Right. Because right. the yeah, you know, and and that's what I wanted to impart to all of you guys since we're talking about NFTs and and my take on it. Next to my family, they know my take on it and they get my take on it. There's no walang malisha to, walang pakay. It's you know, look, fuck. Jonathan bought it. Marco bought it. Walang. Thank you. But see, the fact that you guys bought it means so much to us. So fucking much. Because we work so hard on it. Every day, stressing out. I mean, I'm just me. My family had sleepless nights. I'm sure Mom, Sharon, and fucking Will were talking until four in the morning. Will told me that. So I know. I'm sorry. But thank you, Mom, Sharon. I know, I know you did it. I know you guys were worried. But will Mark like it? Will he not like it? Will it work? Will it not work? Is it, Will it do it justice? And... I know you guys work so hard. And I did too, in the sense, you know what I mean? I was part of it. I had so many sleepless nights. I mean, Oscar fucking messages me at 6 a.m., knowing that I'll wake up at, at around 8. So that's when he'll call because he knows when I'll wake up. Oscar, right. man. Because he's my friend, for real. You know what I mean? And we're talking every day. Should we do this? Should we do that? We're trying to understand because we want to share this idea with you. To share it. Not to con you. To share the idea of what we're doing. That how can we reach them? Because, I mean, the most painful thing is when people... But you have every right to do it. To be skeptical. Which is okay. But there, in, the, in, this, in this Facebook Live thing... That's what we wanted to share you. That's it's right. with That's you. Right. It's real. It's real. And it's innocent because we love it. That person chose to buy it. Thank you, man. You know, we made it for you. And you bought it because Bastusana. Right. You bought it because cause you 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 liked what I did. And and now lang I'm really coming to terms with that shit. Like I, I remember when my family was asking me, these guys, the collectivers, but what's it like? And, and you know, it's, it's, you, can, you can go autopilot, like, yeah, yeah, you know, fans, fans. But ultimately, I don't know about other musicians, but, but you, there's a part of you that feels not worthy. Why? Because I'm a fan. And, and, and you know, I'm not Phil Anselmo of Pantera. I'm not Billy Corgan. I'm not Eddie Vedder. But there are people who come up to you when they and and when and they say that your song meant a lot to them and got them through it's the stuff i say about eddie vedder so when that happens to me it's it's humbling it's very nakakaiyak and and one can't help but feel unworthy of that because i was just doing what i'm doing and now lang i can be vocal about it so there i mean i guess it worked out because Jonathan and Marco bought it. Thank you guys. Because that's 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 who I was, man. 
And I'm proud of who I was. I mean, I wasn't perfect. Fuck yeah, you all know that. But, but my family captured it in these works of art. And I'm proud of it. You know, and thank you for buying it. Thank you, Jonathan and Marco. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mark. Uh, we've got a couple minutes left uh, before we wrap up. Uh, just one last quick question from Zennifer. Um, so do you have any plans to release artwork that's created by you at the Collectorverse? Yes. Again, um, I'm, I'm, I'm with these guys for the long haul. We work together. So, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I used to draw when I was a kid. And, and my family knows it. They saw the drawings that I used to do. And, you know, sometimes I like drawing. Yes, it will be there. But we'll all work on it together. Art. So basically, in, in terms of digital art. So you, have, you can have drawings, you can have videos, you can have music. All of this, I know how to do. I like being hands-on with stuff. My family knows this. You know, I'm a dick about shit. So yeah, drawings, paintings, but set it in the digital realm, limitless. Yeah, why not? More questions. I'm sorry, I fucking talk so much. I'm sorry. My girlfriend's gonna Somebody kill my ass. Somebody bought Focus again. Who? Somebody bought Focus again. Focus. Your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, Ryan this man, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. That's my family. That's my family. I hope, I hope, Ryan. I hope you heard the beginning of the show because we were talking about your ass. Ryan is the reason why I met this wonderful family. And thank you, Ryan. Cuz, what's up? He was there. He knows Marco playing guitar. Yeah. I seen. Overweight, 160 pounds, five foot five, Marco. Thank you, Ryan. There, he and he bought. He knew what to buy, or he knew which one to buy. Yeah, Thank you, Ryan. The focus, um, number nineteen. Thank you. Wow. And, and, Thank you, and, and you know, you know, we're still in the private. You know, uh, we're still in the private. It's not. It's not yet accessible in public, at the moment. Yeah, and it's good but that so, uh, people who who knows this were able to access because they sign up and that's, yeah right and, it is. and it's, we're it's so true. happy that you're you have growing fans and growing family men and uh i hope you continue to inspire people especially in the music industry like you yeah. like you inspire us because the way i see it i see you're spearheading the rest of uh, the musicians in the philippines towards this and i think your success here would open doors to each and every one and create new value to para rockista, rapper, singer. It it what you're doing, Mark, here is 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 basically I think it's a global stand. Um and, and that's for me. Uh, that, that's how I see it. And bro, congratulations. I love you. I love you too, man. Keep it up. I love you, Shara. I love you, Will. I love you, Ronnie. Sure. <laughs> love you, dude. <laughs> Good to you. Oh, my question was Ryan. Go ahead. Go, Ryan. Sup. <laughs> so, Ron? will there be an NFT of your Kung Fu Club posts? Oh, motherfucker. I'm going to... Uh, no, I think they have a copy of it, guys. There's a photo. There's a classic photo of me because and Ryan. When we were grade, I don't know, grade two, grade four, we took Kung Fu under Mr. Paxton Chen. And it's me and him in our Kung Fu outfits doing this. And I'm going to send it to you. Why, Rai? Are you proud of that picture? <laughs> I posted it on Facebook, man. Jesus Christ. That was, that was us. So again, on Ryan, he knows, he knows me as Marco, the real me. And there, in, in this exchange, that's why it means a lot to hear these things from, from my team, from Oscar, from my friends, my family, from Shara, from Will, you know. Because there, I'm, I want to be, you know, I want to be happy and I want to do the things that I want to do. 
free of whatever pressure. And this is the perfect avenue. And it seems to have worked. I don't care if it's just one piece. People bought three pieces in this exchange. Thank you. It's very, very fulfilling. And you made... Fuck, I've been anxious for so long. And Oscar knows this. Shara knows this. Will knows this. I've been anxious every day with them. That, you know, that the skeptics would be like, you know, fuck that. But people bought three things. And that means so much to us. And thank you. And again, that's why I... My, my plan is to be with these guys for the long haul. So yeah, I'll be around social media doing covers and all. But the real shit that matters, not that that doesn't matter, but there are when, when I get um, emotionally fragile, that shit will be in the collective verse. So again, you know where to find us. Um, this is just one. This is just the beginning, isn't it, Oscar? Damn right, it is. Just the fucking beginning. We're going to do so much more. And hopefully, there, if there's anything I want to say at the end of it, hopefully you believe that our relationship is real. We're not fakers. We're not scammers. Fuck that shit. Because they're everywhere. And there. This is a private blockchain. This is an ecosystem that we're trying to make. If you guys want to understand that, and I'm sure you, you have every right to want to understand everything, you can do your research. There are many informative videos on YouTube. But apart from that, I think um, there's going to be another AMA Right. Right. Ronnie, so, spe- yeah. I believe well, there's also going to be a technical AMA tomorrow at the Anatoy's Discord, Collectiverse Discord server. So, if anyone's there, please feel free to join the team tomorrow to learn a lot more. Yeah. So that's that's very important. So again, for the techies there, you have every right though to be skeptical skeptical about. The, the science of it, the numbers, you know, and there. So there's another AMA where my dad, my Shug Knight, Ma, I can't say it because, you know, I got to be politically correct. Ma, my brother yeah. will be talking about it. We'll be repping collective, you know, the, the collective verse will be repping me. We'll be repping Michael V. We'll be repping the Kramers. We're all into this. He'll be repping us tomorrow. And another AMA for all of you who are techies about this, who want to know the nitty-gritty. He can talk about it. But then again, what I want to say, my parting thing is that we're real. We're doing this. It's real. We're a family. We work on it together. It isn't a business deal. It isn't a business endeavor. We're doing this because we believe in it. In this utopic fucking idea. You know? There and then hopefully you, you just believe that and it's okay. Well, I think w- with that we are done for tonight's AMA. Mark, Sir Oscar, Mom Shara, Sir Will, thank you all so much thank for joining also. us and also as a fan of music, thank you so much for bringing Hanoi Rock into the blockchain. And <laughs> as a fan, I cannot wait to I cannot wait for more. So thank you all so much. And once again, thank you all so much to everyone that logged in and joined us for this fun, engaging, and insightful AMA with Mark Abaya and the amazing team over at Anatoys. If you want to learn more, please um, please log on to thecollectiverse.com right now. Sign up and get your hands on these limited edition, amazingly minted NFTs. And as we all heard, this is just the beginning of something. This is just the beginning. There is a lot more to come, and I cannot wait. So thank you all so much. I can't wait for the next conversation. Cheers. Cheers.